für das, warum ich am ersten am ersten, am ersten, am ersten. Despite all the problems in Kashmir, this area is celebrated for its textiles, its weaves and its embroideries. Rohit, which ones are your favourite? Uh, that would have to be the Jamawar, which is uh, I think one of the most exquisite uh, textiles in the world. And you know, it comes originally from Persia, but now the Kashmiris, I mean since the last, I don't know how many hundreds of years it's being uh, made here. It's incredible. I think it's one of the most, absolutely most beautiful uh, textile that I've ever seen in my life and then of course we have the uh, the, the famous shatush which is now of course banned uh, the famous ring shawl and you know it's been there forever I think but now we can't you can't really sort of uh, you, you're not allowed to produce it legally because the chiru the deer from which it comes uh, is uh, sort of you know is almost extinct and then of course the worldwide phenomena of of, of pashmina and to think of it it all comes from Kashmir Till you were 17, you lived in Srinagar. Tell us a bit about your growing up here. Oh my God, it was absolutely incredible. It was like actually growing up in paradise and uh, life was uh, just like one amazing long picnic. It was just beautiful. So when you left Srinagar at 17, did you know you were going to do fashion? I didn't, I didn't really know I was going to do fashion, but I knew that I was going to do something which is uh, going to be uh, more uh, creative rather than, uh, you know, a regular job. I, that I knew. But I didn't know it was going to be fashion at that time. Kashmir on the world map, what does that mean to you? Uh, Kashmir is, I don't think, really made a fashion statement anywhere. It's the craft. Mm -hmm. It's the carpets, it's the shawls, it's the Pashmina, the Jamawa, the Shatush earlier. Uh, the craftsmanship is incredible. So I would say the craft is, uh, you know, worldwide phenomena, but maybe not fashion. Just like Rohit's creations, the crafts of Kashmir are multi-layered, timeless and truly limited edition. This episode of I'm Too Sexy for My Shoes, join us on Mission Kashmir. We begin our jaunt with Pashmina. Pashmina wool comes from a mountain goat in Ladakh that is called, well not surprisingly, the Pashmina goat. It takes about 10 to 12 processes till this wool takes the shape of a shawl. We take you through a few. First on the charkha, the wool is converted into thread. It takes 10 days to weave a shawl for women that measures 2 square meters and weighs 250 grams. While it takes 15 days to create a shawl for men that is 3 meters long, 1.5 meters wide and weighs 450 grams. The simple Pashmina shawl gets a more glamorous aura when these expert hands work 7 hours a day for 6 days a week over a period of 4 months. So about 672 hours of work creates a shawl that costs 40,000 rupees. But when these hands convert the humble Pashmina into a Kani shawl, the price of the same wool goes up anywhere between 1.5 lakh rupees to 2.25 lakh rupees. The reason for the value addition is the creative process behind the Kani. First, a design is created which is then replicated on a script called Talim that guides the worker on when to introduce different colors into the shawl so that the pattern formed is perfect. Interestingly, the same script is also used while weaving silk on silk carpets. Depending on the colors and details of the pattern, the number of needles differ from 150 to 300 and the time taken to create each of these beauties varies between 8 to 14 months. This complex multiple weft inlay technique to create a pattern on the Kani shawl is the same technique that's used to create a jamewar. 